Today we're going to talk about alchemists, which is a... Uh... <laughs> alchemists is a two to four player game I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alchemist is a two to four player game where you play as a chemist, a scientist, someone who works at a university trying to develop potions and gain more and more reputation than your fellow alchemy bros. Yo, alchemy bros. That, that's probably like offensive in some part of the world, I guess. Okay, so Alchemists is crazy. It is a meaty, meaty, long, heavy euro with with deduction, some bluffing in there, and a whole lots of colors. I mean, have you have you seen the box? Have you seen? Actually, Carl, can you summon the board for me? Can you see this? This is all the colors you get in Alchemists. There's <laughs> it's really colorful, it's really, really high quality cardboard, everything is heavy, everything is, it's, it's oh, and did you see, did you see the, the, the did you see the, the things? Carl, summon the cauldron! I asked you to summon the cauldron, not, have you seen this? I mean, actually, let's just show them. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of cardboard pieces here. Loads of tokens, loads of colorful images. The art is fantastic. The boards, the the, the player booths, the, the cauldron pieces, they are fantastic. The, everything looks and feels amazing. The cardboard feels good. There are a few things, which I'll talk about later, about the cardboard where there are a few misprints and stuff, but those should probably be fixed by CGE soon. But uh, this is an Essen copy, so it does have some mistakes, but... Uh, Look at this and this cost like at Essen cost 40 euros and I mean yes I know prices and stuff, but 40 euro price There's quite quite an extensive amount of cardboard in here and it looks amazing And they were somehow also in that price included the development of guess what? An app Yes, you've heard right alchemists Needs a nap to be brought. Doesn't need, but it's way better when it's played with an application, a mo an iPhone application. You gotta check that out. Alchemists, there's an app for that. <laughs> Some of the actions on the board which you can take, it's a worker placement, right? So you place actions on the board, which actions you want to take, and some of them require you to use some of these guys. And there's, for example, one, four, or four of the actions require you to use these. Essentially, you just essentially scan. There's a camera thing. You can turn that off and change it, but you scan the two items, and then it gives you, it gives you, um, Let's, let's show that actually. You scan the two items and it gives you um, which potion that you've made. There are three colors of potions. There's red, blue, and green, and there's a positive and a negative effect. So the health potion is a poison potion if it's a minus, and a plus, that means it's a health potion. The same applies for the speed potion, where if it's a plus, it gives you speed. Well, it doesn't really have an effect, but if it's a minus, it paralyzes you if you drink it yourself. Because one of the actions on the board is that you drink the potion yourself to try to find out. So, the progress of the game essentially involves you taking Testing out potions, which you could also test out on a student who never, of course, takes everything and tries everything out. He will take any potion you give him, unless you give him a bad potion. From that point on, during that round, the, 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 the student will ask for a one gold payment. After you've given him a, a negative potion with negative effects, he will need to be paid. Otherwise, he'll just be eager for science. You know what I mean? <laughs> When you test out a potion, it will give you which potion you've made between two ingredients. You take two ingredients, you place them in your cauldron, you scan it. It tells you which potion has come out of those two ingredients. And you mark on your board, on your deduction board, which potion you've made. Which potion you've made. Once you know which potion you've made, you've, you can start to deduce which of the eight alchemicals, they call them in the game, but they're like molecules, essentially. Uh, from I'm from a more scientific background, so I like calling them that, I understand it better, but they're called them alchemicals in the game, which are essentially the eight possible combinations of 
things that you could have. And it's a little bit complex how it works, but then it clicks, uh, and then it finally makes sense. Essentially, there's there are a few permutations for this. There is the positive, the negative, which I've already talked about. There is the three colors, red, green, and blue. And there is big circle and small circle. So all of these together combine to create a particular alchemical, which is formed of three circles, one of each color. Some of them are negative, some of them are positive, some of them are large, some of them are big. If you combine an alchemical with another alchemical, both of them have the same, same color, and the same sign, so if two alchemicals, if both of them have the same color and the same sign, so if two alchemicals, say um, one has a positive red and the other has a positive red and the positive red on one side is big circle and the positive red on the other side is small circle, that means that they will combine and form a positive red potion. The same applies for the other thing. So, let's say there's a negative green and a negative green, two alchemicals. One of the three components of them is the negative green and the negative green. They both have negative green, but one of them is big and one of them is small. Then they too will form a negative green potion. It's kind of... <laughs> but, once you actually see it in picture, you will understand how it works and that's okay. That's okay. Okay, it, it, it's complex until it makes sense, and then it makes sense, and then it's fine. This game has a lot of stuff, but the rule book is, is, is about 20 pages long in full color and has lots of little flavor text put in, in there, and it's, it's, it's awesome. The rule book is really good. You can read through it, you can read through it and it's fun, you can read through it and it explains every single part of the process really easily, you can find what you want really quickly, everything's laid out fine. Um, it is a very good rule book, you won't have any problems learning the game through the rule book with this one. It's not going to be difficult at all, I mean obviously a video would be nice, uh, a rules explanation, which is not this video, okay? So if I mess up anything, it's, it's not me! This is not a rules explanation video, this is a... Uh, this is me. Going insane. This is what keeps me sane in my life. This video review series. Me going completely batshit here is what keeps me going. You. You also note your deductions on a small piece of paper where you can cross out which alchemicals you know that are not and mark around the alchemicals which you know that are and you get a booklet of these which obviously you'll, you'll be yeah you'll be using one per game because what happens is at the beginning of each game all of the eight alchemicals there are eight ingredients and there are eight molecules or alchemicals at the beginning of the game these are randomized so essentially you don't know which of the eight alchemicals corresponds to which of the eight ingredients in the game that's the way it works once you think you've figured out through a variety of actions which uh, is the alchemical that corresponds to a particular uh, ingredient, then you have the theory board where you will try to publish theories in a very academic sort of sense. So I might switch to this accent for a while just to have the coffee. So there's the mushroom there, you will place the alchemical which you think is corresponding to that mushroom there and then place your seal right over there to show that you're the one who... Am I in focus? So essentially what you do is you have, for example, the mushroom, which is one of the ingredients you place, the token of the alchemical, which you think fits that one there when you... This is when you, when you actually do a theory, right? When you write a theory, it's one of the actions on the board. And you place your seal on top of there to show that you're the guy who discovered the theory, but if you're wrong, or even if you're not, people can try to debunk your theory, which means that they can say, hey, you're wrong, because look at me, I discovered wrong. So you can actually disprove a theory and and put your own new seal if one is already out there, if, if, say, the player is bluffing, because that's where the bluff element comes in. Some players will, pr will probably prefer to do it a different way in that they would make sure that they know exactly which alchemical corresponds to which ingredient before actually publishing the theory, but some others, so that they can get points and maybe lead some other players astray, will publish theories before they are quite sure. And if your theory is debunked, then you are basically a crappy, crappy researcher. And you will get reduced reputation, etc, etc. Unless, when you publish the theory, you actually state that you are unsure about one of the three colors. <laughs> that is 
crazy thematic, you know? When you publish a paper, I come from, from a game academia perspective, right? When you publish a paper, it is okay to state in the paper what you don't know that is fairly sure about. That's the way practice is done. If you have found something, but there's further research that is required, you can say in that same paper. So, if you happen to publish a theory and say in that same paper, listen, further research is required here, and when someone else debunks your theory, you don't lose reputation because you've stated beforehand. But if you don't, if you do say that you're unsure, which is not known to other players, but if you do say that you're unsure, then you will not get any victory points at the end of the game from that. You will only get the reputation once you publish, but you will not get a second um, set of reputation at the end of that turn. I'm going to move back to my usual spot now because I'm really close to the camera and, I'm, and she's getting a little bit uncomfortable. As you go through the game, you can do a few more actions. So we've already talked about drinking a potion yourself to see what potion it makes, or giving it to a student to see what potion it makes. We've already talked about publishing in theory and possibly debunking a theory. I've talked to them out of order where they actually become unlocked in the game because <laughs> look at me, I don't care. I don't give a flying paper airplane. Uh, the other two things that you can do along the game, along the time of the game, adventurers will come by your booth and try to buy potions from you. They will have a requirement of which potion they want. If you know it, you might want to try to sell it to them. If you know the potion that they want and sell it to them and bid that it's actually the correct potion, you scan and check and if it is correct, you will get four coins. You will get the most amount of points. But you can, if you're an ethical, I guess, alchemist, you can, if you like, experiment on the dudes who arrive. You can make a potion which you have no idea if it's the correct one. Try to gain more information about the ingredients that you have in your hand. And that is a viable strategy. You will get less money lower because you can bid, you can say, look, I know that both the color and the symbol are correct. Then you will get four coins. But you can also bid that you only know the symbol, in which case you get less coins today. And that way you can use an ingredient which you'd like to find out more about or confirm or something of the sort um, to actually test out on your custom. Another thing you could do is a simple exchange of ingredients into gold. One ingredient into one cold. That's the other action you could do. And I'm sure there's another which I forgot. Hold on there. Another one you could do is forage. Forage for more ingredients. Of course, you need to get the ingredients from somewhere. Some of them are gotten, uh, uh, some of them are obtained from when you actually, uh, where you place your starting player token. Essentially, at the beginning of the game, you can either decide to take favor and ingredients. Favor cards are cards which give you a special ability and ingredients are obviously ingredients. The more you take, farther you will play and the earlier you will reveal what you intend to do in the game. Because then it goes the opposite side. So if you say, okay, I'm gonna place my token there, show it, show, show, show. I'm gonna place my token there, right? Which means that if I place my token there, I will get what's written here. But that means if someone else puts his token further up from me and gets less things, he will see what I intend to do and then act after me. So there's a really interesting um, mechanic here which kind of sort of balances out the player order with the rewards that they get and the players get to choose who gets the reward and etc etc between them. You can also make sure that you go first by paying one gold and placing your dude over there. If you go first then, then yeah, if you place your dude there you actually have to pay gold. Uh, but that's cool. If you really need to go first the next turn you just place your token on the gold piece bit and you are gonna go first but you also get nothing you get to pay instead that's how life goes if you need something you go and bribe someone wait i didn't say that the last action that you could do is actually purchase artifacts which will help you in your magical you can buy these artifacts, each of them has a special ability. The earlier ones give you more permanent abilities, while the later ones give you more victory points, essentially. there's Essentially, at the beginning of the game, what you do is you select three of H1, three of H2, three of H3, and those nine cards will be... Nine cards will be the ones that will be available for the whole game. So whoever buys them first, get them first. And they change according to the time passage, which is regulated by the uh, arrival of the conferences, which is another mechanic where you get points according to how much you've published or not published. And there's another mechanic which happens, uh, and there are a few more rules for the unused cubes, but mostly that's more or less the way the game goes. You uh, research, 
you try to find out as much as you can about the potions, then you want to publish and get reputation for the discoveries that you've made and then people will try to debunk them or endorse them if they agree with you and then you'll try to sell some potions, you also try to buy some things, you also try to... And this all leads up, by the way, to the exhibition at the end. At the end of the game, you will have an exhibition where you will display the potions that you've managed to discover and make. So that means at the end of the game you will be trying to manage and selling off the last few things, publishing the last few papers, and also trying to get the ingredients you need to make the potions for the exhibition. <laughs> and then you display those potions to the people, you get more reputation there, and then you count up points, whoever wins wins points. Okay, so. Now there are a few things which we need to discuss more seriously here, which is the inclusion of an iPhone application to be able to enjoy the full experience of the game. Because let's face it, although there is a possibility to play Alchemist without the iPhone app or the Android app, uh, you need the player to essentially not play and kind of sort of answer questions all the time. There's, a, there's this. Um, yeah, it's cool that it's included, but I would only use this if I am I would only use this if I am, say, in a campsite with no internet or no iPhones where we can't plug them and charge them and they've all run out of battery and we don't have anything to do except play Alchemist. Then I would use this. Otherwise, the experience is so much more heightened with the use of the app. Yeah, but I'll explain exactly why the app is important here and what effects it has on the game. Because th this, is, this is quite... The app is not a gimmick. This is important because when they told me, ooh, there's an app with that, you know what I mean? When I heard I was at the press event and I asked them, ooh, what's this game? Looks cool. And the guy from Check Games said it's a game which has a, 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 you play with an app and you scan. I was like, oh, come on, you really, really? I mean, I don't mind digital integration, but is this going to be just a gimmick? Oh, no. No way. Look, the app is integrated within the game in an extremely extremely natural sort of sort of streamlined perspective where, where it just it just it just works you know it's it's so natural for you to, to to say okay I'm gonna combine these and then these two ingredients see what comes out and having to look having to look at a chart or having to ask someone what they make completely kills the magic of discovering the unknown what the app does essentially is hides, randomizes and hides the information in the game which needs to be deduced. But you know nothing in the game. You start the beginning of the game knowing nothing about what each ingredient makes. You decide to blend these two. You pass it, you show it to an app and you find out what it makes. There is a sense of discovery. There is a sense of magic that happens. What is science after all, right? Every, every piece of science is magic before it is understood and this is what's so great about the app here that you as a researcher as an alchemist as a scientist are trying to find these two magical ingredients right researching them finding out how the system works the understanding what's happening in the app turning that magic that uncontrolled happenings these uncontrolled happenings into science into registered not knowledgeable facts and once you understand how it works, uh, the, the app then turns from something that's just revealing what happened, it turns into a tool. So there's a transition here from a magical sort of object which tells you what happens to a tool which confirms the assumptions and the deductions that you are making. Change happens so subtly along the game as you discover more about the ingredients you're using in computer science and... and game study. There's an effect called the Eliza effect or Eliza effect, call it what you like. Essentially this means that we as humans, when interacting with the software, we tend to assume that the happenings in the software are more natural, more human than they actually are. This Eliza effect, which stems from our lack of knowledge, from our lack of understanding of the underlying system, is what creates the magic for us. Your research in the game converts the unknown to known and therefore the magic to science, and therefore the shiny iPhone into a useful tool. So you have to understand that the experience will be very different if you had to play the game without 
the iPhone app, which hides everything and releases the information at the intervals where it releases them. If you had to look into a chart with all the info, if you had to understand from before how all of the system is working, if you had to look at the triangle and not someone actually tell you directly the answer to the two combinations that you have made, <laughs> the, the, the feel that the game would have would be infinitely different. It has to be understood that this effect that alchemists create, this feeling of you inputting and something which you do not know, which you do not have control of, giving you an output and then using that output to, to, to for your further deductions, that is only ever going to be possible with this digital integration. So, although it is clever and, and useful for CGE to include the, the non-digital integration mode within the game, I wouldn't probably recommend using it um, to get the full experience. This, uh, all of this does not mean that it's perfect. There are some gripes with the printing, some of the tokens which you need to insert in the booth do not fit, but as far as I know, uh, CG is correcting that. But otherwise, this is an example of an idea, a brilliant idea executed to its full potential. Alchemists is an amazing game. Brilliant game. Yes. Why not? Well deserved, CG.